For decades, the US government denied the existence of the highly secretive Air Force Base that is Area 51. Then all of a sudden, and without reason, they confirmed it did in fact exist. Well, in the first place, we could all see for ourselves it existed, but they denied it anyway. Then came the dawn of the internet, and boom, satellite imagery meant they could no longer hide something that can be sent across the planet in the blink of an eye. This was the game changer. Other countries around the world, for example, would have similar complexes, you would have to think, right? Perhaps China have top secret bases where they are footering with everything and anything they can get their hands on. Of course they have, but they deny it just like they deny the existence of ancient pyramids or the fact that they are claiming landmass in the South China Sea that is within international waters. U.S. military aircraft, Papa 8 Alpha. This is Chinese Yun Reef. China has sovereignty of the National Islands, including Yun Reef and its adjacent waters. Leave immediately and keep far off so as to avoid any misunderstanding. Philippine military aircraft, I'm warning you again. Leave immediately or you will bear forward responsibility for all the consequences. On the face of it, China is the calm and collective nation at the middle of a peace process within the Korean Peninsula. But they are not kidding anyone. There is no doubt China are after global dominance that the US has had a monopoly over for the past 60 years or so. They are after a power shift. Recently, China tested nuclear missiles that shoot up into the outer atmosphere and are then launched back at the Earth from a separate system at an eye-watering six times the speed of sound. According to the state-run news site China Daily, the country has developed an aircraft called Starry Sky 2 that can hit speeds of 4,563 miles an hour, which takes it right past current missile defense systems. The most recent test involved launching the Starry Sky 2 into low Earth orbit on a multi-stage rocket. Once separated, the aircraft was able to fly on its own at a record speed of Mach 5.5 for 400 seconds. Not only can it hit nearly six times the speed of sound, the aircraft can also rapidly switch direction mid-flight. Isn't that astonishing? They want to be the best. Perhaps this is the justification of the new US Space Force. Just a thought. And what about this second Sphinx everyone is banging on about? Could the recent announcements coming out of Egypt actually be a coordinated effort for news agencies around the world to pick up on in order to inject some much needed publicity into this region after the recent upset over there and of course ISIS knocking on the door. According to the Egypt Independent News Agency, construction workers have discovered a mysterious statue with a lion's body and a human's head, believed to be a second sphinx. The workers were developing a road between the Luxor and Karnak temples, only six miles from the famed Valley of the Kings, where the statue was found. Is this a hoax? Check out Ancient Architects' video for some truths on this finding. We will link that below. We hope you guys have been enjoying our recent videos. We are also on the BitChute platform, as well as Teespring. So check those out after this video if you get a chance. But in the meantime, wait till you hear this. You are probably wondering where we are going with this video. The fact of the matter is that no idea was suggested as typing begun, but we have managed to focus our thoughts on something you may find interesting. Cleopatra is one of the best known women in history, famed for her supposed beauty and intellect, and her love affairs with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. She became queen of Egypt following the death of her father Ptolemy XII in 51 BC, and is often portrayed by Hollywood as a glamorous femme fatale. So how much do you know about Cleopatra? Was she really a great beauty and how did she become queen? Most of what we think we know about Cleopatra is merely the echo of Roman propaganda. As a woman, the ruler of a very rich country, Cleopatra's independence was anathema to Rome. What's more, she had seduced two of their leading generals, Caesar and Mark Antony then join Antony in a war against Rome. Outside Europe, in Africa, and in Islamic tradition, she was remembered very differently. Arab writers refer to her as a scholar, and 400 years after her death, a cult statue of Cleopatra was being honored at Philae, a religious center that also attracted pilgrims from further south outside Egypt. And when she subsequently gave birth to a son, she named the baby Caesarian, Little Caesar. 
In Rome, this caused a scandal. This was firstly because Egypt and its pleasure-loving culture were despised as decadent. But it was also because Caesar had no other sons, though he was married to Calpurnia and had had two wives before her. And of course, he had just made himself the most powerful man in Rome. Elite Romans were meant to share power, but Caesar seemed to want to be supreme, like a monarch. It was a doubly unbearable prospect. Caesarian and Egyptian just might grow up to claim to rule over Rome as Caesar's heir. Plutarch, the Greek biographer of Mark Antony, claimed it wasn't so much her looks that were so compelling, but her conversation and her intelligence. Cleopatra took control of the way she appeared, coming across differently according to political need. For example, at ceremonial events, she would appear dressed as the goddess Isis. It was common for Egyptian rulers to identify themselves with an established deity. On her coins minted in Egypt, meanwhile, she chose to be shown with her father's strong jawline to emphasize her inherited right to rule. Sculptors don't give us much of a clue to her looks either. There are two or three heads in the classical style, but also a number of full-length statues in Egyptian style, and her appearance in these is quite different. Caesar's assassination in 44 BC meant Cleopatra herself was in danger, so she left at once. With her little son, Caesarian, she had been living in a palace of her own on the other side of the river Tiber from Caesar's household, though it is likely she hadn't taken up permanent residence there, but returned on regular visits from Egypt. Not surprisingly, Cleopatra had been much disliked in a city that had got rid of its kings, for she'd insisted on being addressed as queen. It can't have helped that to honor her, Caesar had placed a statue of Cleopatra covered in gold in the temple of Venus Genetrix, the goddess who brings forth life, who was held in high regard by his family. She had Caesarian, her eldest son, represented on the temple wall at Dendra alongside her as sharing her rule. After her death, the Roman Emperor Augustus lured Caesarian back with promises of power, only to have him killed. He was aged 16 or 17, though some sources say he was as young as 14. Mark Antony was the father of Cleopatra's other children, they were taken to Rome and treated well in the household of Mark Antony's widow, Octavia, where they were educated. The adult Cleopatra Selina was married to Juba, a minor king, and sent to rule with him over Mauritania. She gave birth to another Ptolemy, Cleopatra's only known grandchild. He died in adulthood by order of his cousin Caligula, so none of Cleopatra's descendants lived to inherit Egypt. Augustus founded his reign on the defeat of Cleopatra when he had the chance to have a month named in his honor. Instead of choosing September, the month of his birth, he chose the eighth month in which Cleopatra died to create a yearly reminder of her defeat. Augustus would have liked to lead Cleopatra as a captive through Rome, as other generals did with their prisoners in the formal triumphs that celebrated their victories, but she killed herself to prevent that. Cleopatra didn't die for love, like Mark Antony, who killed himself because there was no longer a place of honor for him in the world. Cleopatra chose to die rather than suffer the violence of being paraded, shamed, and helpless through Rome. Augustus had to make do with an image of her that was carried through the streets instead. Cleopatra's family was descended from the Macedonian general Ptolemy, who had picked up Egypt in the Shear out after Alexander died. But 250 years then passed before Cleopatra was born, 12 generations, with all their love affairs and secret assassinations. This was the argument put forward to BBC's History Extra by a lady named Mary Hammer. We hope you found it as interesting as we did. Just a little bit of history that is, of course, laced with speculation. A period in history that is so close to modern times, we can almost touch it. Yet, we are educated to believe that this was the first stretch of civilized civilization, we think not. What do you guys think of this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.